Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church, Bristol, Tennessee, Online Sunday School for October 11th, 2020. And today we are going to continue learning about God's people and uh, God's plan for His people. Clayton, what are you doing up in that tree? Well, I'm serving the land. I'm not sure that's such a good idea. Climbing trees can be dangerous. Well, I know that, but I just want the best lookout spot ever so I can see everything. Well, it's fun to have a good view. You know, several years ago, I went to the Grand Canyon and... Ooh, let me guess. It was grand. Well, yes, it was. And it felt like you could see everything from up there. Dang, that must have been a great view. It sure was. But you know, Clayton, God has the best view. Really? Yeah. He can see everything. And the cool part is he sees us and he takes care of us. But is he always watching? Yes. He doesn't even stop to sleep. Good thing because I need a lot of looking after. <laughs> oh, you sure do. Be careful. Why don't you just come on down from there? But you know, I can give you some great tree climbing tips if you come up here. Uh, uh, come on. Maybe not. <laughs> When Jacob moved his family from Canaan to live with Joseph in Egypt, they were a clan of 70 people. For hundreds of years, God's people lived peacefully and safely in Egypt, and their numbers grew. But then a new Pharaoh took over. He was afraid of God's people because their commitment to God was strong, and they had become a powerful nation, just as God had promised. So... The king of Egypt forced them to work as his slaves. But God had a plan. He wasn't going to allow his people to be slaves forever. God would lead them to the land he had promised. But first, God had to find a leader to guide his people into freedom. A Hebrew man and woman from the tribe of Levi got married. She became pregnant and gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. Pharaoh wanted all the Hebrew baby boys killed, so Jochebed hid her precious child to keep him safe. Please, God, help save my son, she prayed. Jochebed placed the baby in a basket and floated it in the Nile River. When Pharaoh's daughter came to the river to bathe, she spotted the basket in the reeds. Poor child, said the princess. He is a Hebrew baby. I will keep him as my own and call him Moses because I brought him out of the water. Moses became the son of the princess. He grew up in the palace in Egypt. But when Pharaoh tried to kill him for harming an Egyptian, Moses ran away to the desert. Moses lived in the desert of Midian for many years. One day on Mount Horeb, the mountain of God, Moses noticed a bush covered in flames. He wondered, why isn't the bush burning up? He went closer to it. Suddenly, a voice boomed out of the flames. Moses, Moses, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals, for where you are standing is holy ground. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have heard the cries of my people. I am going to rescue them. Go back to Egypt. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses was shaking. No, Lord, not me. Who am I to talk to Pharaoh? Send somebody else. I will be with you, Moses. Here is a sign to show that I sent you. Throw your staff on the ground, and it will turn into a snake. Moses did as God instructed, and a snake slithered on the ground where the staff had been. Moses grabbed the snake by the tail, and it turned into a staff again. Moses saw God's power. Now Moses was ready to lead God's people. So God sent a plague. 
The Nile River flowed red with blood. The water in all the ponds, pools, and fountains turned to blood. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God, and the water in Egypt flowed clean and sweet and clear again. A week later, Moses went to Pharaoh. Let my people go. Pharaoh said, No. So God sent a second plague to show Pharaoh his power. Frogs invaded Egypt. They splashed in the water. They rolled in the dirt. They climbed in the windows and jumped on the beds. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God and the frogs jumped back into the Nile River where they belonged. Then God sent a third plague and dust on the ground turned into tiny, nasty gnats. They buzzed in the air. They landed on the people and the animals. Moses went to Pharaoh again and said, Let my people go. Pharaoh said, No. So God sent a fourth plague. Thick swarms of flies poured into Pharaoh's palace and the houses of the Egyptians. Every building, every barn, every porch and kitchen was covered with flies. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God, and all the flies flew away. Then God sent a fifth plague. All the livestock in the fields of Egypt died. The horses and donkeys, camels and cattle, sheep and goats fell over dead. But Pharaoh would not let God's people go. Then God told Moses to throw handfuls of soot from the furnace into the air. He did, and nasty sores called boils broke out on the people and animals. That was the sixth plague. Moses went to Pharaoh and said, Let my people go. Pharaoh said, No. So God sent a seventh plague. He sent hail and thunder and lightning. It was the worst storm Egypt had ever seen. The hail flattened the crops in the field and stripped the leaves off the trees. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God, and the hailstorm ended. Then God sent the eighth plague. Swarms of locusts covered the land. They ate all the plants and every tree. The insects filled the house of Pharaoh and all the Egyptians. Make it stop, cried Pharaoh. So Moses prayed to God, and the wind blew the locusts away. Then God told Moses to point to the sky. Moses did, and suddenly a thick darkness covered Egypt. For three days the people couldn't see anything. That was the ninth plague. God told Moses he had one more plague. At midnight the Lord said, I will go through the land of Egypt. Every firstborn son in every household will die, but my people will be safe. This will be the worst plague of all. Then Pharaoh will let my people go. It all happened just as God said. Get out now, cried Pharaoh. Take what you need and leave. So Moses led God's people out of Egypt. Moses led the people through the desert to the shore of the Red Sea. The people looked straight ahead and saw only water. They turned around and saw Pharaoh's army charging across the desert. We are going to die, they cried. Don't be afraid. The Lord will fight for you, Moses said. Be calm and watch what God will do. Moses raised his staff toward the sea. Suddenly, the wind blew and the water piled up into huge walls, leaving a dry path through the center of the Red Sea. The people walked to the other side on the dry ground God provided. Pharaoh's chariots and soldiers raced after the people. When the entire army was in the middle of the sea, God made the walls of water crash in on them. The sea swallowed the Egyptian army, the chariots, and the horses. But God's people were safe on the other side. 
Thank you for joining us today. Um, remember, God is always watching over you and He loves you very much. And I'm going to close this in a word of prayer. Father God, thank you uh, for your word, your true word that tells us the stories of people um, who lived long ago. Um, but we can learn lessons today. Thank you for watching over Moses from the time he was a baby all through his life. And thank you that you watch over and protect us. Help us to always trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Shampoo.